Hello friends, and welcome back to Keith's Kitchen. This week, we're making a fall recipe, All right? Another fall recipe. And, you know, one could say that this is because I just really like fall. One could say because it is fall. All those things contribute, I admit. Um, this week we're making chili, all right? But not just any chili. This is chili that is adapted from a coworker of mine. I got this recipe from Saimi, this wonderful woman that I've worked with for the past couple of years. She is great. And she gave me this recipe and said, um, it, it was one of her favorites. And you know, I'm inclined to believe her because it's great. Um, I make a couple changes to it. I add a little bit more meat and um, I add, I change the beans. Instead of black beans, I do uh, kidney beans. But other than that, it's basically the same as her recipe. So thank you to Saimi for sharing. And uh, I'm really excited. So without further ado, let's make some chili. All right, so to begin, we need butter. So take about four tablespoons of butter and add it into a large pot. Now this recipe is going to all take place in the same pot, which is nice for dishes. And uh, turn the heat on to medium. We'll melt that butter and then we'll add in some hamburger meat. So here I have about two and a half pounds of hamburger meat. You could go a little bit less or a little bit more. Uh, I find two and a half pounds is just right. Uh, mine was a little frozen, so I had to, had to poke it a little bit. That's okay. Um, and we're going to fry this in the butter for about eh, five to seven minutes until it's mostly cooked all the way through. And then we're gonna add in some seasonings. So here I have some onion powder. I did about mm, half a tablespoon and I just kind of eyeballed it. And then here is some garlic powder, as you can see. Uh, did the same, about a half a tablespoon. And this will add a lot of flavor and uh, also cuts down on the amount of raw ingredients you have to use. Then I'm going to add a pinch of salt. And you don't want to add too much because you are going to be adding um, you know, beans and tomato sauce and other seasoning packets later. So just a couple pinches of salt and then about a teaspoon of black pepper. And this is optional, but I like salt and pepper on pretty much anything. So uh, add that in, give it a little stir, let it cook for another couple minutes, and then we're going to add in some vegetables. So here I have one whole chopped white onion, which I, oh, I almost lost, but I caught it. It's all good. You didn't see anything. And then uh, one whole green pepper. So we're going to stir that in and cook it for about five minutes until the vegetables are um, kind of cooked through. And then we'll start to add in our beans and tomato sauce and spices, and then we'll be good to go. So here I have some seasoning packets. These are chili seasoning. You could make your own, but I'm lazy, didn't feel like it. So just add those in, and uh, I did a hot and a regular one. You can adjust that for your own taste. Stir it in, let it cook for just a little bit, and uh, we're gonna add a little bit more spices, and then we'll add our beans and tomatoes. So here I have a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Those are optional, but I really like the flavor and the scent that cinnamon adds, and I like the spice from the red pepper flakes. So add that in, let it cook for just a couple minutes, and then it's bean time. So here I have two cans of kidney beans two 16 ounce cans of kidney beans. I've drained them and uh, you're going to add all the beans right in there. So that's our first type of beans and we're going to be adding two kinds of beans. The second is one large 32 ounce can of pinto beans. Again, drained. Um, you can modify the beans, but honestly, I really, really like uh, kidney and pinto beans in chili. They're not too strongly flavored and um, they, they lend themselves really well to chili, I think. Then we're going to add in some tomato sauce. These are two eight ounce cans. We're gonna add those right in on top. And uh, one last thing before we start, one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. Now this is crushed and diced because this is all the grocery store had at the time. Um, but you know, we make do with what we've got. Over overdapped, <laughs> overcome and adapt. I don't, I, I, I messed that up. We'll roll with it though. This is a no judgment zone, okay? Anyway, stir to combine, and uh, we're going to turn the heat. We're going to leave the heat actually on medium until the mixture starts to simmer. Once it simmers, as you can see here, put the lid on, reduce the heat to low, and we're going to cook this for an hour and a half minimum. You can go longer, um, but 
that really helps the flavors to develop. So after an hour and a half, minimum, uh, again, I could have gone longer, but I was hungry and I really didn't feel like waiting. This is what you're left with. A beautiful chili. Um, I will say, make sure to stir it every so often as you're cooking it so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And that's it. You can serve it up with whatever you want. I didn't get any cornbread or anything interesting. Um, just some sour cream, or not even sour cream. I think it was Greek yogurt that I used. Um, but yeah, serve it up in a bowl. Enjoy it. And that's it. All right, friends, the chili is done. This is a this is not a good angle. I'm afraid if I tip the bowl, I'm gonna dump chili all over the ground and that would be sad. So now you could totally let this go longer than an hour and a half. Um, this is how long, that's just how long I decided to let it go. You could let it go for two, three hours if you wanted um, and slow cook it until uh, it's really, really, um, all the flavors are really nice and melted, but I am hungry and I didn't feel like waiting. So let's give this a taste. I'm gonna get just a small bite because I don't want to burn the inside of my mouth off. So there we go. Mmm. Still really hot. Um, so a couple things. First, the beans are not as like, I, I wouldn't say they're mushy in regular chili, but here they're soft, but not too soft, which is really nice. The flavor's great. It's a little spicy, which I don't mind. I think it's really great. That's partially because of the red chili pepper flakes that I put in, but also partially because of the um, spicy, like chili mix that I put in. So you can change that, but it's awesome. It doesn't need any salt or pepper. I think it's seasoned just right. Um, you really taste uh, all the different things you put in there, which I'm really happy about. And it's really, it's a really warming, comforting dish, right? I really just wish I had some cornbread. Um, I don't have that. I thought, I, you know what? I was at the store. I was thinking of things to make with this. I couldn't think of anything. All I had to do was ask somebody, not me. And anybody in that store could have told me to buy cornbread mix or make my own cornbread. I just didn't think of it. So that's all right, though. No judgment zone. OK, I'm going to put some sour cream, have some tortilla chips with this. I'm going to have I'm, it's going to be great. OK, and the best thing kind of similar to the Bios, the best thing about this chili is that uh, up until a certain point, it gets better the older it gets. OK, don't leave this chili in your fridge for three months and then pull it out, eat some, get food poisoning and then complain from the hospital that I sent you there. That was not me, okay? This is a disclaimer. Within logical, you know, constraints, it's it's good the older it gets. But anyway, um, yeah, this has been Keith's Kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you enjoyed the food. Hope you make it. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>